Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Amen. It's good to see the brethren in the church. Amen. Because God has been good to us. Amen. I don't know if I have a testimony or not. But God give me a testimony. One morning I was awakened by one verse of scripture. This is the Lord's doing. Marvelous is the eyes of Almighty God. A few weeks ago, I woke up, I went to the door, I opened the door, and the voice of scripture come to me again. As I pushed the door, he said, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with his benefits, not man's benefits, it's God. Sometime I had a dream. A little child hold my hand and ask me to follow her. I find that strange. But then I had some grandchildren. From from the center. Kalani, come. Yes, your mother. Go on. Go on. The little child says to her mother, I'm waiting to hold grandpa hand to cross the road. And a little child will come up in the house. And if nobody else ain't tell grandpa nothing, she will come to me. Call Grandpa. Go there, Grandpa. Grandpa, I love you. Know. And I said to her, Grandpa, I love you too. And what I love about children, you must honor your parents and love your teachers. She says to me, Thank you, Grandpa. The little one, Noah, <laughs> that was what she was. She would come at the other bedside. She said, Grandpa, good day. Grandpa, you're good? I said, yes. I said, you're good? I said, yes. I said, you know I love you. When the bigger ones does not do that to their father, no, in laws, those two little children do it to their grandfather. And I, I went to the health center and I said to them, i glad it happened. They were like, what do you mean? I said, I'm glad I had a stroke. If I didn't have that stroke, I will never see the love of my children. I could have gone into a box and they cry. But I couldn't hear the cry. So I say like Paul this morning, I'm glad whatever happened to me is the Lord's doing. Marvelous are his work. And as long as I live, I want to worship one God. The only true and living God who would give me that book by inspiration. I love the Lord. I know God loves me. This morning I went to the shower. I went to the shower. I said, Father God, help me to believe your word and not what man say. I always go in the bathroom to pray when I show him. Because no what I can do today, had not been for God, I could not have done it. I'll continue for a while. I ain't going far. I'll stop here. A 
morning, I got up to worship. I do that every day. In the morning, uh, I got up to worship. I said, put not your trust in princes. Put not your trust in man. They were in a very great, man great fault. They returned to this earth. But the only true and living God live forever. I ain't making a wrong no skylark with my God. He took me from my mother's womb. He kept me from my mother's womb. Now I'm old and gray-headed. He still does not forsake me. And you know, man just question things. I got up one morning, I sat down at the bedside. I said, Father God, what to do? I was questioning him, eh? Because he's my friend, he's my lover, my everything. He said, from your youth, you man remember me. I know that you are old. What happened to you? It's because it happened to you from your youth. And what the Bible says about Brother Craig is what God said. I am what I am for today because God made me what I am. I will lose my teeth. I will not climb the hills anymore. It's the Bible, you know, the Bible I'm quoting. I lose my sight. I lose my hearing. I'm not able to climb no stairs, no height. But the same God. The same God. As long as you live, you will receive. Why should we remember your creator in days of your need? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Remember now thy creator in the days of your. You got to remember it. Amen. Because when you get old, you can't do the things that you want to do. So is it in the flesh. Amen? So God is good. I want to welcome each and every one this morning to our service. God has continuously been good to us. You know, yesterday while I was here and I was saying, look how God good, eh? Some months ago we were talking about here. And we are here, we're talking about other things. Amen? God take us from one glory to another glory. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us bow heads in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you this morning for your goodness. Lord, I want to thank you for your word because your word, your spirit, and your life. Father, we just pray, oh God, that your word will go forth, oh God, and touch the lives of your people this morning. Father, I pray, oh God, let the anointing that break every break in the lives of your people. Father, it is, by, it is by your power, oh God, it is by your strength, it is by your wisdom. It is by your spirit that what we do and what we do and how we do what we do, oh God, we exist. So we commit our lives into your hands this morning. We commit, oh God, the lives of your people into your hands this morning. We commit the truth of your word into your hands this morning. In Jesus' precious name and everybody say. I want us to turn our Bible to two scriptures. I want us to turn to... Luke chapter 18, one of my favorite scriptures. Luke chapter what? Luke chapter 18, and we're going to read one verse. And then we're going to turn to our next scripture. Let's turn to that first scripture, Luke chapter 18. And let's look at verse 1, and look what it says. It says what? And he spake a parable unto them. To this what? To this what? That men are always to what? And not, let's turn to First Thessalonians chapter 5. Remember that scripture? First Thessalonians chapter 5, and we want to read verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of, this is what he said. Pray without what? Pray without what? Hallelujah. This morning, I want to speak to us on the topic 
the altar of prayer. The what? The altar of what? Turn to your neighbor and say the altar. Where there is no altar, there is no power. Tell somebody, where there is what? Where there is no altar, there is no power. You see, today, the average believer wants power. The average preacher wants the anointing. The average member in the church wants the anointing. But they refuse to do what the Bible says. And that is to pray. And there is an altar that must be established in the lives of of the believer. You see, there will, no, there will be no door open in our lives without an altar. And there, be, there can be no door that will be closed without an altar. I, I want you to get me. You see, we must understand what is an altar. You see, an altar is not what some people, when they come on the podium, they call here an altar. Listen to me. Here is not just, up here could be what you call an entertainment rostrum. It could be what you call a place where everybody come and dance and praise the Lord, hallelujah, sing worship. But that is a diff, there's a difference from this place and an altar. You see, an altar is a sacred place. Tell them what is a sacred place. It is a sacred place. It is a holy place. It is a place and time where you and I meet God. We must, we, listen to me, where we want? Meet God. If there is no altar, there is no what? Power. And the church today is running from that sacred place place called the altar. Many believers don't want to pray anymore. They rather entertainment. And I'm going to tell you something. Anybody can preach. Anybody can teach. But it takes a man or a woman of God to pray. Because prayer re requires what? Sacrifice. It requires discipline. It requires, listen to me, and God never established anything in a believer, whether in a preacher's life, unless a man or a woman forms an altar called prayer. We must be what you call a prayer mantis place. We must learn how to pray. Listen to me. We cannot win any battle without the altar called prayer. We'll be fooling ourselves. We, listen to me. Let me explain what I mean by that. You see, man is what? Spirit lives in a body and a soul exists to guide the spirit. Let me explain something like that. What I mean by that. You see, I'm taking my time this morning because it's very important. You see, the real you wants to worship God. You understand? The real me wants to worship God. But the housing of the real you wants to deny the real me from worshiping God. I want you to think, let me say it in slow motion. The real me and the real you wants to do what? But the housing wants to restrict us Hallelujah. from worshiping the true and living God. You see, we must, we must understand the importance of establishing altars because every person that wants to have dominion on the earth establishes an altar. Let me read that. Every person and every person that wants to have what? Dominion 
establishes an altar. Whether it's a Christian or an ungodly person. They establish what they call what? Altar. A simply mean a place that they're meeting their God. A place that they're meeting what? Their God. And they establish those altars for many reasons. So when you see people went and they go and they give food to the flag, what do you think they're doing? Establishing their what? <laughs> when you see people go and spin around and jump around and flip and they tell them, go and bring a bottle of this and a bottle of that, what do you think they're doing? Establishing a what? I want to take my time because you see we must understand the battle that we are in. And in order for us to win this battle, we must understand how to establish what? A meeting place or an altar. You see, that is why in the book of Luke that we just read a while ago that the Bible said he spake a parable unto this what? End. Unto this what? End. Turn to that scripture and I want to show you something. Unto this what? end. Listen, at the end of the day, what is most important? It is the altar that you have established with God because we cannot get, we cannot get the revelation. We cannot get the insight. We cannot get it unless we establish a place of prayer, an altar before God. Until we establish an altar. We must establish an altar. If we're going to succeed in life, if we're going to succeed in our Christian lives, we must establish an altar. And the believers today are running from prayer. They are running from interceding and waiting before God. It is easy to go to party. It is easy to do all sorts of things. But when it comes to prayer, it is a dangerous thing for some Christians. One man say, if you want to know the strength of your church, check your prayer meeting. That is the fact. You know why it's a fact? Because the church is established on prayer. Jesus Christ he said, said himself said, I pray that the enemy will not what? Save you as what? Wheat. Because prayer is important to us as believers. We cannot do anything or function otherwise. It is easy for us to do many things. But without prayer, Listen to me. Without prayer, we are what? Nothing. Establish a prayer. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The blood, even Jesus Christ said something. When he went into, into Gethsemane, you know say he, he prayed and he sweat like what? His jobs was like what? You know it was like, you know why it was blood? Because it takes sacrifice to pray. Let me tell you something. You know we read about all these great men in the Bible. We read about them. We rejoice. Even some of us, every time a prophet runs, we want to run behind the prophet. Every time somebody that we claim to feel to be anointed, we want to run up and down. And we want to run. We want to say, oh, prophet, pray for me. Oh, prophet, because all they want is a prophet sign and a prophet lie. All they want to do is to run to the prophet. But let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with the prophet. Listen to me. If we spend time in the presence of Almighty God, God is going to reveal his word and his truths to us. Listen to me. Why we run to the prophets? The only reason why we are running to the prophets is because we want to hear what God says, but we fail to spend time in his presence. Tell somebody the altar. We must establish an altar. We must establish an altar. We must be where God wants us to be. We cannot function effectively if we don't have an altar. If we spend more time on Facebook, WhatsApp, and, and games, and don't have an altar, something is wrong with us. Listen to me. As a believer, we ought to feed our spirit. Our spirit needs to be fed. We must always make excuse to be in the presence of Almighty God. Sometimes, that is why when, sometimes we feel sick and we go, you so we run, oh, pastor, come and pray for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the Bible said that, you see, when you start to worship God and you're praying, you're way before God, God is going to reveal the tricks of the enemy concerning your life. Because in his presence, God will reveal. Because he has the key to unlock and to lock. He has the key to lock and to what? Unlock. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Prayer is a mystery. Say mystery. Prayer is a mystery. The devil knows the mystery. You understand? The devil knows. 
Why you think people three and five times a day go and worship their God when they set up the altar? You think, you think they don't understand? It is a mystery. Satan wants to receive what? Worship. So, listen to me. The Bible said in Isaiah, the reason why God threw him out is because he said, I want to be who? Like who? The Most High. What does the Most High God receive? Worship. So, what the enemy wants to do is to receive. And don't be, don't, you see, sometimes we Christians fool ourselves. And we tell ourselves, the devil can't give me anything. That is a lie. Satan took Jesus himself unto the highest peak or the mountain, the Bible said. And show him all the kingdoms. Say kingdoms. The kingdoms of the world. And this is what he said unto Jesus. He said, if you will bow down. And what? Worship who? I will give it. Satan is the first time Satan tell the truth. You know that? You know Satan was telling the truth? You know why Satan was telling the truth? You know why Satan was telling the truth? Satan was telling the truth. Why? Because he had the power to give it. Because Adam gave it over to him. So, the point I'm making, when you see people bow down and they worship other things and you see they're getting prosperous and you see they're increasing and you see they're doing this and you see they're doing that. Don't be fooled. Satan give them to. Because they're worshiping who? Their God. If you and me as believers, we ought to bow down and worship Almighty God because it is He who has given us power to get what? Wealth. When we bow down and worship God, he will bring us to a place of deliverance. We must establish an altar. An altar is very important into the lives of the believer. Hallelujah. An altar is important. Listen to me. I want to read something here. What, you ask the question, what is an altar? An altar is a system of authorization. You hear what I just said? If you're writing, write it down. An altar is a system of authorization. It is a what? It is a system. It is a system. A plane works on a system. A car works on a system. The microphone works on a system. So an altar, it is a system of authorization. An altar, it is a system of authorization. An altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes the physical realm ground legal. You understand? An altar is a platform, a platform where the realm of the spirit makes the physical realm legal. Legal contact is established because of an altar. Hallelujah. That is what an altar does. It establishes what? Contact what? With the spiritual realm. And make it what? Legal. Let me explain an altar. You see, when Jesus Christ came and he died, he established an altar. His death is an altar. He said, listen to me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, what he did, he established an altar that every man, any woman could come to that altar and receive what? Eternal life. The system for making it to heaven, the way to make it to heaven is to go to the altar, to go to the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross. As a result of that death, you have free what? access. That is why he said, I am the true vine. Hallelujah. I am the true vine. It means the other system that exists is in truth because I am the authorized system. An altar is a system of authorization. And what makes the system work? It is prayer that makes the system work. This microphone 
is an altar. But what makes this microphone work, it is the battery that powers the microphone. Without the battery, the microphone is dead. Likewise, without prayer, the altar is dead. So we must establish a prayer life in order for us to make it. We must establish an altar. Too many Christians don't want to pray. Too many Christians don't want to pray. Too many Christians don't want to pray. We want miracles. We want healing. We want deliverance. But we don't want to pray. We want the benefits of the altar. But we don't want the sacrifice to the altar. We don't want to pray. We don't even want to spend five minutes in the presence of Almighty God. We don't want to spend five minutes in the presence of Almighty God. Listen to me. The altar is a place that establishes. Hallelujah. An altar is where the covenant are activated and maintained. It's where what? The covenant are activated and maintained. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. An altar. An altar is where? Praise the name of Jesus. An altar is where the covenant are what? Activated and what? Maintained. Covenant cannot work without an altar. You hear what I just said? A covenant cannot work without what? A covenant cannot work without an altar. Unless, listen to me, you establish, listen to me, an altar. You have no covenant. Because a covenant is a legal and a spiritual binding agreement between you and God. And what you do when you come to the altar, it establishing the legal binding ground between you and God. Listen to me. That is why it's important that if you're going to reach God every 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock is what you establish as your altar, your meeting place, your place that you meet with God, a place that God will reveal his truth to you, a place that God, listen, will manifest himself to you. Listen to me, if you don't believe me, you just ask Daniel. Daniel had a meeting place. The Bible said three times a day he went before God and God manifested himself before him. Listen, so when, hallelujah, when the presidents and all those counselors came to take him, to throw him inside, listen, because of his faithfulness and his con connectivity to the altar, what happened? The lion could not have roared because he was connected to the altar. The source, the source, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I want to read something to you. The most accurate measure of your health, of your spiritual life, is prayer. The most accurate measurement of your spiritual health it is your prayer life. Everybody could read the Bible. Everybody can teach from the Bible. Everybody can sing. Everybody can teach. But it takes sacrifice to pray. Because prayer is a mystery that releases the anointing upon your life. So if you refuse to pray, the anointing will never flow. What might flow is the anointing. Have you ever wondered sometimes? You know some people could really sing. They're in church, right? They're singing, singing, singing. But somehow there's no connectivity. Have you ever seen that before? They, they could well sing. They could well play the instruments. They could do all these things. But somehow there is no spirit. You know why that is so? Because the lack of an altar. You see, talents. Anybody that has talents and is not spiritual, all they do is perform with their talent. You see what I say? Take it for pastor. Anybody, it does not matter what you do. Listen to me. It does not matter what you do. And you see, that is why this morning I pray for these young men. It does not matter what you do. Anybody that has talent 
and have no anointing. It is very dangerous because their talent cannot sustain them all their lives because they will grow old and they can't perform the level of the talent anymore. You see, what makes you spiritual? It is your time spent in God's presence. It is your what? Time spent in God's what? Presence. You see, we must establish an altar. And the altar is what will release those giftings. You see, those giftings that we have, if you want them to be released in a particular way, we must do what the Bible said. Pray without what? Ceasing. You see, pray activates the anointing. You see, there's a difference from having your gift and no anointing. Because everybody could have gifts, but there are no anointing. Everybody can have gifts, but there's no anointing. So you could sing well, you could play the drums well, you could play the keyboard well, you could do preach well, but you have no anointing. And the way you know people get anointed is when the Spirit moves upon your life and it connects you to, listen to me, it's when the Spirit of God moves upon your life and it connects you with those who are listening because the anointing, the Bible said, breaks yoke. It what? Breaks yoke. You see, the devil knows that very well. You see, sometimes we could fool ourselves by our gifting. And we, con we misconstrued gifting for anointing. We misconstrued talent for anointing. Listen, I teach you this morning. We confuse giftings with the anointing. They are not the same. Let me repeat that. We confuse sometimes giftings with the anointing. But they are not the same. God will use your gift. But it will take the anointing to transform your gift. You, you understand what I mean? And in our society and our churches today, what we have is a lot of talents being displayed. But we have no anointing. Because let me tell you why. And I'll tell you how to judge it. Because it's the word of God you'll judge things by. If what you're doing not making the lives of people better, but bitter. You need to check yourself. If what you're doing, if you're singing, and listen to me, and people's lives are not being lifted up, if you're dancing, it does not matter what you do in the kingdom because it is the anointing and your prayer life. Listen to me, it is your prayer life that will, will tell me the health of your spirituality. Spir spirituality is the note by your prayer life. That is why I tell the church, we have to come out and pray. If the church needs to grow and to move forward, as a corporate body, we must pray. When we come out and pray together, we are growing spiritually. We can have all, you remember I said one time, they are corporate prayer and they are personal prayer. You could have your personal prayer, but when the church call a prayer meeting, it is the church that call a prayer meeting. We need to be here. If we're not here, listen to me, we are not partaking of the corporate prayer. Listen to me. And it doesn't matter how much of us, whether it's two or three of us, the fact that we obey God, listen to me, we have to keep doing what we need to do because it's the anointing that breaks yoke. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Anytime a people that not want to pray, you got to keep your eyes open because you will run into trouble because you see your spirit man will be dead because your spirit want to communicate to God and the only way you could communicate to God is to lift the level of your spirituality and one thing that lifts the level of your spirituality is the realm of prayer we must pray and we must do it without ceasing that is why that is why Luke said men are always to pray and don't give up on it we must establish an altar called prayer prayer is important to you and I Christians must be people of prayer. We must pray. Sometimes I have to talk, talk to myself. Did I need to spend more time in prayer? Listen to me. Don't ever fool yourself. The devil know the mystery of prayer. Listen to me. There is no victory that will come your way until you establish a prayer life. Until we establish a prayer life where you and God commune in. When you and God talking, when God wants to lead you, God can lead you. Let me tell you something. Your prayer life will improve your spiritual sensitivity. 
The reason why many people lack discernment because they have no prayer life. Because your prayer life accentuates and brings your spiritual sensitivity to the greatest level. So sometimes God wants to reveal things to you, but he can't reveal it to you. Because you have no altar. He can't tell you. You have no time. You have no time for him. You must take time off and wait before God. We must do that. We must take time and wait before him. If we're going to grow. Let me tell you, no church, no business will ever grow without an altar called prayer. Even the ungodly people know that. They establish altars. So some of them come in the morning and they establish altars with their God. They spread lavender. They spread this bush. They do all kinds of shenanigans. Because they establish an altar with their God. And if the ungodly people know that how much they believe her, we ought to know that. We ought to establish an altar with God. So when we raise up early in the morning, we can look before him. Talk to him now. Wait before him. Wait before him. Establish an altar. Let God be a place that let, let you, you must establish a place where they go in your joint room, where they're lying down, you're cooking up, you're walking about. It does not matter. We must establish a place called prayer. Anytime you establish a place called prayer, we move in the realm of carnality. And the Bible says carnality is enmity against God. Because the carnal mind cannot what? You, you know why the Bible says the carnal mind can't please God? Because in Romans chapter 12, the Bible says, and be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. Let me explain something about the spirit realm. About the spirit realm. Come, brother. I want to use this example. Hallelujah. I want to show you something. Come. Here yeah, you come. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, no, come up here. Don't forget the podium. Hallelujah. This is an example. This is an example. The spirit, this is the spirit, and this is the body, and this is the soul. The soul is normally reflected as your will, emotion, or your intellect. You understand? That is what your soul is reflected as. So the body holds the spirit. The spirit is constantly crying out to worship who? The spirit is constantly crying out to worship God. But the body won KFC, Royal Castle, and everything else. And pizza. He won pizza too. And he won pizza. The body always wants to sleep in the morning. But watch movies late at night. The body always wants to play games. And the body always wants to not do what the spirit trying to cry out. So the body constantly tired. And hear what the mind is saying. This is what the mind is saying. Listen very carefully. The mind is saying, Oh body, the spirit is calling you to a higher level. He's calling you to a higher level. The spirit is calling you where? To a what? A higher level. Oh body, let me speak to the spirit. But the body saying, hush up mine. Hush up mine. Hush up mine. So, in order to get the mind to be where the spirit is, the Bible said in Romans chapter 12, and what? You got to what? Renew. You cannot redo something or renew something if it, without. Listen to me. Renewing means that it had been someplace before. And he's calling to its original state. And he's saying, if you want to get back to this state, you got to renew. So he said, renew your mind. And you got to renew the mind by the word of God. You saw what the body needs to do is to take the Bible and read the word. Let the word become a part rather than KFC and Royal Castle and pizza. Let it come apart. And then the mind will say, all right, I give up, body. I surrender. Thank you. Thank you all. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Unless we renew our mind, and renew in our mind means that we got to what? Form an altar. You got to will yourself. The mind is your will. You got to what? Will yourself. 
You got to tell yourself enough is enough. Hallelujah. You see, many people depend on intellectual ability for spiritual answers. Your intellect, it is good, and you must seek to be brilliant. But I will tell you something. Without the Spirit of Almighty God, your intellect means nothing. Hallelujah. The Bible says you must renew your mind. I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 21. And I want us to read this verse. Matthew chapter 21. Adele, stop sleeping. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 21. I want to read from verse 18. We are in the house of the Lord. When we're in the house of the Lord, we got to concentrate in the house of the Lord. It's no place for playing games. If you're going to the courthouse, you can't play games. You can't be on your cell phone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 13. Verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13 of 21. Hallelujah. Let's read together. And he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of what? But you have made it a den of what? We cannot make the house of God dens of thieves. Even God understood the importance of the altar because his house should be called a house of what? We must be praying. We cannot, as believers, not pray. The Bible said, my house shall be called a house of what? Don't make the house of God. As believers, we must know how to pray. As believers, we have to pray. As believers, we must find time to pray. You see, if we want to grow in our spiritual life, we need to do this. You see, it is impossible for a man to pray and ignore God's word. It's impossible to pray and ignore God's word, but it's possible to a man of the word of God and ignore prayer. You cannot be a man of God's word and ignore prayer. You have to be a praying person. You, you see me? You have to be a praying person. You have to be a praying person. Hallelujah. Let's turn to James chapter 5 and verse 16. Hallelujah. You see, we must submit ourselves to pray. And I want to encourage us. You see, part of this message this morning is to encourage us as believers that we must submit ourselves to what? We have to submit ourselves to pray. We must submit ourselves to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to what the Bible said. The reason why we must commit, submit ourselves to pray, the Bible says, confess your faults one towards another and pray what? One for another that ye may be healed. Listen, that ye may be what? Healed. Listen, this is the verse I want to read. The verse, the final part. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth what? Listen to me. The effectual fervent. Say fervent. What that simply means, you have to do it all the time. You can't do it today only when you feel sick. Lord, oh God, I feel sick. Help me. Only when you're sick, you want to call upon God. Only when you think, oh God, you know me sick. Oh God, help me. Help me. No, 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 no. The Bible says, and listen to what he said. The effectual fervent prayer of who? A righteous man. So it means that you could be righteous and have no prayer life. You could be called, you could be born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, but have no prayer life. The Bible said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. It avails much. And if you think about, if you think about all those great men, when they caused the sun to stop, when they caused the rain to stop, when they divided the Red Sea because they had fervent prayer. Let me explain something to you. Hey. <laughs> Remember I said an altar is our, a place of authorization? Let me explain what that means. You see those two scriptures? You see the scripture here? You know when the Bible says it's an altar, the, when you have goat, the altar is a place of authorization. Let me explain what that means. Once you establish continuity of ferventness, listen, it is the same, all truths are parallel. Like, like, like the Sean. Every time you come and play the drum, you hear it sound better? You hear it doing better? 
Why I think he's doing better? Because he's what? Fervent. Because he's doing what? Consistently. Because he did what? Consistently. So when you do it, you build the altar every Saturday or every time you come to practice session. You do it consistently. You know, after a while, he don't even have to watch the grandmother again. He don't have to watch Wendy again. He don't even have to watch me again. You know what happened to him? He just taken up the sick and played what? Anyhow. He could start the timing anytime. You know why? Because he had been doing what? Consistent. He had been what? Fervent. Same truth when you establish an altar. When you establish an altar and you have any frustration in your life, anything that is worrying you, you see things happening in your life, and because you have been consistent and you go before God and you say, Oh, Father, oh, God, I come to you this morning because you know why? I need some help because I'm seeing the plan of the enemy. Here the Bible said, the Bible said, because you are fervent, the Bible said the God that you serve will raise a what? Standard against the enemy because you are consistent. He will deliver you. That is what I mean. The effectual, effectual. In other words, it's strategic. Every time you're going to pray, you know how to pray. You know all the corners. So when you go before God, let me give you an example like Daniel. Just use Daniel as an example. The Bible said that Daniel, every single time, he was right before God. Morning, noon, and night. And the presidents, the counselors, and all the king's servants, they don't like you. One thing about people who like to pray, don't expect people to like you. Mark my words. One thing about people who pray, do not expect people to what? To like you. Because, you see, your spirit will be talking to a higher spirit. And your thinking and your operations will be not of the flesh. So when you do things that doesn't look natural, they will not understand it. Because carnality can't understand spiritual things. So don't expect everyone to approve of things that you may do or you may not do. You understand? Because of who you are and where you are. So, let it, so what happened? Daniel. Three times a day. So what happened to those guys? They, those guys realized that Daniel was outstanding. He wasn't following the regular because he was irregular. And the Bible said they went to the king. So they used their position to go to the king. They used their influence to go to the king. Listen. I want you to pay close attention to what I'm saying. They used their position. They used their influence because they already established an altar with who the king and they went to the king and they said oh king live forever why you tell why you think they tell the king live forever when you tell a king live forever you are worshiping the king and paying homage to the king you are saying oh great one oh great mighty king you live forever and they said to the king live forever and when the king received the glory and the praise what the king did, the king opened, whatsoever you want me to do, I will do for you. You catch it now? You understand that? I will do what you want me to do. So they said to the king, I want you king, we have, came to, we have come together, and I want to sign a decree that anybody that worship any other god, set the god that you set up, we will throw them in the lion's den. You see the authority as a result of establishing an altar? The president and the conquerors they established the altar with the king. And the first thing they do, they worship the king. And the king said, if you, when you worship me, you just open yourself for all the powers that I have. And the king, though he asks a question, he signed the decree because of the altar. So with us, with God, when we establish, that is why I said the effectual fervent prayer. When we establish effectiveness, effectiveness consistency, and all, these things in, and all these things in prayer, what will happen? God will open us for us. And whatever we ask him to do for us, he will do it for us. He will never forsake us. That is why it's, we read in the book of um, Psalms 46, the Lord is our refuge and he's our strength. He is our refuge and he's our strength. Whatever we ask of him, 
he will do it for us. But you see, there's always, there's always a condition for God to work for us. There's always a condition for things to happen. If you want to get your A-levels, the condition is that you have to study. If you want to get all your passes, the condition is you have to study. If you want to lose weight, the condition you have to exercise. If you want to lose weight, the condition you have to stop eating the things that you ought to eat, that you ought not to eat. If you want to be a spiritual giant, the condition is that you have to establish an altar, a place called Called prayer. If you want to see the mighty move of God in your life, you have to establish a place called prayer. If you want to see men and women get delivered, you have to establish an altar, a place called prayer. You see, nothing will happen in the lives of a believer until he establish a place called prayer. Because in the place of prayer, God will say, what you want me to do for you, and I will do it for you because I am God, and I will do it for you because I will fix it for you. Nothing happens until we establish an altar. God, he is the one that will fix it for you. When we establish an altar, when we establish a place called prayer, you see, man was created to worship God. We were created to worship God. You see, if we don't worship God, we'll worship some other being and some other thing. So my message today is very simple. My message is very simple. Establish a place or an altar in your life. And make that altar a place called prayer. God will only bless and release the anointing on our lives when we sacrifice for him. When we put ourselves in a place called prayer. You see, as I said, many people want to be delivered. Many people want the blessings of Almighty God. But nobody wants to sacrifice. Nobody wants to pray. Nobody wants to, you see, I will tell you something. I remember when the, 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 the coup took place. You remember when the coup took place? I never hear people pray so yet. I will tell you something. God is not your tool. Tell somebody, God is not your tool. You cannot use God. You can't use God. You can't, you can't use God. Only when you're in that need or in that trouble, you want, oh, God, help me. You cannot use God. You might be able to use man and use other people, but you can't use God. I can't use God. And I've come to that conclusion a long time. That if I want to be a great preacher or a good preacher or somebody to lead God's people, I must spend time in prayer. I cannot lead God's people without having a prayer life. I cannot preach without having a prayer life. I'll be somebody who has theological knowledge but no anointing. I'd rather have the anointing upon my life than have theological skill. Having theological skill is good, but having the anointing is better. Because having the mic in my hand and having no battery to power it is waste of time. You can't hear me. So having the anointing upon my life requires that you and I establish an altar. An altar. Wait before God. You see, sometimes the only time some people pray is when they come to church. The only time some of us pray is only when we come to what? We have no time. We're too busy. Last time I said in Bible study, if you are too busy to pray, you are very busy. You hear what I just said? If you are too busy to pray, you are busy. You cannot be too busy so you cannot spend time with Almighty God. I normally tell people, anytime somebody tell me they don't have time, this is my conclusion. Time have you. Time should never have you. You should make the time. You Listen to me. You should put aside a time. You cannot go to bed 
You can have 24 hours and do have five minutes, 10 minutes to wait before God. And listen to me. I'm not talking about taking five minutes and saying, oh God, I thank you this morning. Thank you for pastor. Thank you for all the members in the church and you're gone. I ain't talking about that. You see, prayer will establish your relationship with him. You can't have a boyfriend, a wife, or something, and one relationship, and you're not spending no time together. The relationship will flop. All they will see, all they see that she have a nice face, he have a handsome face, and that is all will be in the relationship. He or she will grow old with the nice face. But you know what happened? You have no relationship. Like me and the wife was talking, them children leaving the house. Just now, you know. They're leaving the house just now. One go on school, the next one go in school, the next one come. All of them leaving just now. One thing not leaving, me and she relationship. Because when them leave, me and she still there. She ain't going nowhere. You hear what I tell you? So we make sure on a Friday and a Sunday night, we go for we walk and we drive and we enjoy ourselves. Because them children, when they get their they get all the brighties and they leave. They said, Daddy, how are you going? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just me and the mother here. Yeah. But to overcome that, we must develop our relationship. Because you see, what lasts in Christianity is relationship. You must have, we can't be talking about a God and have no relationship with him. We can't be walking, wanting to have, um, have healing and deliverance and breakthrough in our lives. But we have no relationship with the one who can bring the healing and the breakthrough. You see, we have to learn to be consistent and be consistently consistent. Too many believers are not faithful anymore. So they do what they want. Today they're here, tomorrow they're not here. If you ain't feel good to come to church today, they ain't coming. They have all kind of excuse why they're not in church. And I'm speaking as a pastor. That is a fact. We have to make excuse to be in the house of the Lord. Because we just make excuse if you had to catch a plane to go to New York. And it's 5 o'clock in the morning when a rain fall or sunshine. We get in there. But when it's time to come to church, we have all sort of excuse. We cannot make excuse for the things of God. And I'm talking as a heart of a pastor. We must ex make excuse to be in the house of the Lord. Because when we are in trouble, we want to call him. God is not a tool. We can't use God when we want. We must learn to be and find ourselves. There are times, there are situations that people can't come out and people can't come to wherever the meetings may be. But make excuse to be in the house of the Lord because God always reward faithful people. God never promotes slackers. God will never promote anybody who is not faithful. Read the scriptures. We must be faithful concerning the things of God. And the reason why we see Benny Hinn and we see Smith Wigglesworth and we see all these great men. Let me tell you something. If you read their biology, you will see their biography, you will see how many time they spent in God's presence. They were faithful and consistent. They was waiting in God's presence. Let me tell you something. Remember I said, people wouldn't like you. Sometimes going to where God wants you to be is a lonely road. You got to choose if you want to be lonely. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, except you hate mother, father, brother, sister for my sake. It's going to be a lonely road. Let me tell you something. Not everybody will like to agree with you. Not everybody wants to go with you. But make sure that God leads you and you go. Don't look back. Don't what? Look back. Listen to me. Because when they see you're mounted up with wings and they see that you're flying. And they see this blessing happen in your life. And they want to ask, but how that happened? It happened the first day when it was one of us. When it was two of us. When it was three of us. We were faithful in a small amount of us. That is how it happened. Let me tell you something. Make every excuse to be in church, in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make every excuse to have a prayer life. Make every excuse. If you get up in the morning, you make a vow before God. The Bible says he will bless those that keep a vow. Listen to me. If you get up in the morning, you say, God, you say this week, every 12 o'clock, I'm taking half an hour of my lunch. 
to go and read my Bible and to pray. You got to make, you see, you got to make those commitments. You got to renew your mind. If you, listen to me, you got to make those commitments. If you have no commitment, no commitment will commit to you. You got to make those commitments. You have to say to yourself. You got to talk to yourself. You see, I want a better prayer life. I want a better Christian life. The reason why, listen to me, the reason why many Christians live in sin and they can't overcome sin, the reason why they can't overcome sin because they have no prayer life. They have nothing to fight. You can't fight the devil with the flesh. You will lose. You cannot win the devil in the flesh. It doesn't matter how big your mouth is, how soft your voice is. You cannot win the devil in the flesh. The Bible said the arm of flesh will what? Fail. If God says so, that's it. So as believers, we need to take ourselves and wait in God's presence. We need to develop a prayer life. We are always about entertainment and running up and down about entertainment. But when it comes to the things of God and praying, we don't want to be there. Because it's too restrictive. It is sacrifice. That sacrifice we're not willing to make. Let me tell you something. Developing a prayer life, as Brother Craig just said, it's a lonely life. If you want to get your passes, it could become very lonely. When everybody going on after school to go by this fear and that fear, you are to be on your bed with your books. You see, it's when you're persistent. That is why the Bible said the effectual fervent prayer. You have to do it consistently. You have to have to do it what? consistently. Don't do it today and tomorrow and drop off. Listen to me, don't do it. Now we have smartphone. Set your clock. Set it and say, listen to me, you make a vow. Let me tell you, I'm going to give you some tips. If you find it difficult, if you have a whiteboard, whatever your board you have in your house, write it big and say, see, every single morning at this time. Listen, the Bible says, if you keep it before your forehead, you keep it in your eyes and you will see it. Say, every time when I get up in the morning, I must spend time. If you're feeling tired, get up and walk like me. Sometimes I feel tired. I get up and I walk in the name of Jesus. I started speaking your own tongues. I started to build up myself and I started to pray. And then after a while, five minutes, hallelujah, half an hour gone, one hour gone, then two hours gone. Hallelujah. And the anointing start coming over my life. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, if you want to make it, uh, you got to fight to make it. Uh, you got to make excuse to make it. Uh, if you want to get a prayer life, uh, you got to make excuse to make it. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, if you really want a prayer life, you got to make excuse. Uh, because only when you have a good prayer life, uh, you will have a good life. Uh, outside of a good prayer life, there is no life. Uh, there is only carnality. And a believer, you will hinder yourself from getting your prayers answered. We must develop a prayer life. Anybody that wants to have dominion in this life, they must set up an altar. A place called prayer. We must meet with God. Ask yourself this morning, talking to the church, when last have I met with him? When last have I really sit down and talk to him? When last have I sit down and talk with him and have a relationship with him and tell him how much I love him and how much he means to me? When last have I set myself apart and went on a, a day or two praying and fasting, waiting before him so he can guide me? We are coming to the end of the air. And we need God's guidance. We need to hear from him. One songwriter said, if I don't hear from you, I need to hear from God. I need to hear the mind of God. I need to move. I need to make all my direction the direction of the will of God. Listen to me. There are many times in our lives we make decisions and we made those decisions because we didn't have God in the decision. Many people today are living in fear and they are living in regret. Because they did not hear God. They are living. Many people are divorced. Many people are, 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 are living in the rocks. The, the marriage going away. The friendship going away. Why they didn't hear God? Listen to me. When God started to talk to you, listen to me. God has started to talk to you from the inner heart. And they start to choke you and say, hey, don't do that. But because of the flesh, the flesh wants to give way. But the Bible says you need to renew your mind. God wants to touch your heart this morning. Stand up on your feet.
God wants you to establish an altar. God wants to establish an altar. Hallelujah. On this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask God this morning. Talk to him.